please. Hi there, it's Dr. Matt Allender from Brookfield Zoo, and we're out here at Nachusa Grasslands, um, enjoying the day with the turtle dogs. And uh, the turtle dogs just found uh, ornate box turtle. Um, and we're out here to do health assessments and demographics on these uh, beautiful state endangered uh, um, animals. So here we've got a, uh, a male box turtle and kind of closed up. It's a little chilly out today. And today we were, we're using these Boykin Spaniels and I'm not sure if you can see them, but they're out there searching the scents of the box turtles. As box turtles will move, um, they'll pick up those scents and then they'll bring those those turtles to us. We take them with us and I'll show you later on today some of the health assessments. They get to go to the doctor just like we go to the doctor or we bring our, our pets to the doctor. Um, so this is the first step is utilizing the dogs in order to find these, these beautiful creatures. The process on how we search for box turtles using these, these canine detector dogs. These are Boykin Spaniels. It's the state dog of South Carolina. I'm sure many of you already knew that. The, uh, um, these dogs are, are specifically trained to work in um, kind of a, a patterns where they're overlapping with each other, but not directly on top of each other. So they, they kind of just weave back and forth, trying to pick up scents of the turtles as they go along. Over the course of the last 15 years, I've been lucky enough to work with these dogs um, between five and seven times a year, so about 30 days or so in a year. And each dog's just a little bit different. Um, every dog has their skill set. Some like the prairies um, and do better finding turtles in the prairies. Some are better on slopes or ridges and others are, are in forested areas. And so, but having a team of dogs, and right now we have five dogs out, um, each one of them um, brings something different to the table so that we have kind of one pretty amazing team of canine detector dogs. These guys are unique in that these particular um, uh, group and team of dogs is really trained only for turtles. Um, there are other amazing teams that are trained um, for others. And see, now we've got a turtle. You guys saw that. That's uh, Laz. Lazzie picked up a turtle right in front of us. Okay, so after they pick up the turtles, what happens? So right now you, you see the vet students um, uh, running to get the turtle and give the dogs lots of praise. These are working dogs, so they're not, not quite pets. They live for the positive attention um, that, they, uh, that they get when they find a turtle. This is Laz. She's the mom to three of these puppies that are also out. And, and you can tell she's just living for the moment. And so when we find the turtles, we check their permanent ID because every turtle has a different pattern and shell notch. And so you can see them going through the, the L's and the R's and that's, that's their identification system. We have, um, we mark the location with both GPS and with um, some orange flagging tape so that we can put them back in the exact same location um, later today after we do their checkups. The process, you know, keeps on moving, but we've got a big team that then will put some tape around the outside along their bridge, mark them with their ID, um, and then we start moving and we start finding more. As, as you can see, we're already missing our group. They're, they're, they're moving quite far. And then those turtles then will go into their unique pouch um, and, and hike with us. And once they get back to at the end of the hike, usually about two hours, then we will do their checkups and we'll collect all their samples and they get to go to the doctor. Now, you said that these are vet students. How many usually come out with you and is this part of their training? Yeah, so luckily enough, um, these are University of Illinois vet students, both finishing their first and second years. And this is part of their training. Like many of them want to be zoo and wildlife veterinarians. And it's, it's really difficult, as you can imagine, in any vet school in the country to be able to get this experience. But, uh, um, 
But these guys are lucky. At Illinois, we have lots of opportunities. And so these guys will be out here all summer. And these are, these are two vet students that are specialists um, in box turtles this summer. Um, but we will have um, about 15 to 20 new vet students next week that are working on Eastern box turtles. And yeah, they learn how to do physical exams. They learn how to do blood work. They learn how to um, collect blood from these animals. And all of that helps in the training of developing that next great turtle, turtle veterinarian cohort. Um, these turtles are both important from an individual perspective, but they make up a population of turtles that are here. And, and we are concerned about the conservation of, of every single turtle um, so that we can have a healthy population. So where do you get the turtle dogs? Yeah, so the turtle dogs are owned by uh, Mr. John Rucker, and you can see him up there in the front in a red shirt and a backpack. And uh, he, uh, this is his fifth generation of Boykin Spaniels that he's trained to do turtle dogs. Um, the fourth generation that I've been lucky enough to work with. And he trains them on all kinds of different things in his, at their home in Montana, and then comes to the Midwest to help us search just for the field season um, in, the, in the summer. And how many sites will you end up going to this year? So we typically go to about seven different sites in a summer. Um, and, and so that ranges from, from this site to central Illinois, southern Illinois, and Tennessee. Each of the turtles at each site is just a little bit different. They have different threats, things like invasive plant species or predators um, like raccoons or um, coyotes, um, or they have different levels of habitat or size habitat. The data that we get from each of these sites is critically important for managers to help. John, let's go, let's, let's hit that whole slope. We'll come back. We'll come back. Yeah, Lav is over there. She's coming. <laughs> so what got you into box turtles? Well, I... I would say that as a child, I was always interested in box turtles and had a pet box turtle when I was young. Um, but throughout my veterinary training, um, you know, I was learning all the species. And so as a zoo veterinarian, like I take care of, you know, everything from, you know, a tiny little tanager in tropic world all the way up to um, rhinos and, and, uh, and Okapi, another turtle. Good job, Yogi. Good job, Yogi. Yogi is a two-year-old, going to be a two-year-old uh, Boykin Spaniel this year, and uh, is got one of, as you can tell, one of the softest mouths of any of uh, the turtle dogs. He is the sweetest little boy. He likes to cuddle and give lots of kisses. <laughs> So how are they, um, how do they know not to damage the turtle at all? Yeah, so John trains them with lots of, a, a range of different things, um, but things like um, um, eggs, as well as we've printed off and done 3D um, reconstructions of actual box turtles from CT. Oh, wow. So, um, so they, they train them um, using a whole host of different things. We have just um, finished our search and we found uh, more than 12 different box turtles. And right behind me, you'll be able to see a lot of the other wildlife veterinarians and the veterinary students. And they're starting doing the, the health checkups and health assessments. So during this process, um, we're getting a blood sample. As you can see, Dr. Laura there um, is getting a blood sample. Um, and she's getting it from what's called the subcarapacial sinus. It's the nice part is that they don't even have to um, be out of their shell in order to get that blood sample. Um, and then over here on the right, you can see Carly, she's taking swabs of the shell. And for that, we're looking at lots of different characteristics, but we're looking for a fungi um, that has been eating away at the shell. Um, it's called, it's a shell eating fungal disease called the mitomyces. And so we're collecting all those swabs first, and then we're getting a blood sample. And with that blood sample, we're testing for liver and kidney function, infection, anemia, um, minerals, electrolytes. We're looking for different diseases. 
And so you can see there's lots of different things that are happening in order to get this checkup. And then we'll do their physical exam. So we're looking at the condition of their shells and their arms and their legs, and um, we'll get a heart rate on them. And so we'll, we'll bring you back in a little bit and you can listen to the heart rate of, uh, of a box turtle. You'll, you'll be able to hear the whooshing of the blood going through the heart. So um, all of these people are, are training to become uh, um, or are already wildlife veterinarians. And so we're, we're working with them in order to train that next generation of turtle veterinarians. Um, we are just completing most of our physical exams. Uh, most of these turtles look pretty good. Um, some have some shell injuries and some um, issues with their toenails, but I wanted to show you a little bit as promised about how we collect our heart rate. So we're using a Doppler here. This is Carly. And Carly is using the Doppler every time that whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. That's the heart rate. And the heart, the blood moving through the heart. We count how many times that happens in 60 seconds, and that's their heart rate. In ornate and in rest, just like the rest of the reptiles, most of the time heart rate is associated with their temperature, not with stress or anything else. So as the temperature gets higher, so does their heart rate. Temperature gets lower, so does their heart rate. So, um, so this is a better indication of what the temperature that that turtle is experiencing at this moment, rather than any other physiologic uh, function. So as we're finishing up a lot of the blood sampling and a lot of the swabbing and um, you know, just a couple of wrap up um, thoughts about the ornate box turtle um, in that these guys are really sentinels of environmental health here at, um, in Illinois. This is a prairie species. And so trying to identify the health of these animals is critically important. And as you can see, they're, they're quite adorable. Um, and this project is quite large in that it utilizes lots of different people, our canine detector dogs, as we've saw, lots of different vet students and wildlife veterinarians and biologists. And now we're going to take all of that back to the lab and we're going to run all that blood work and we'll have more for you um, at future, in future uh, Facebook Lives or posts at the zoo. Thanks again for joining us.